In today's video, we're gonna go over how to patch this giant hole with all these plumbing fixtures. Let's get to it. You're probably wondering why on earth did they even make this hole in the first place? Well, it's certainly not to make a video about it, so stick around till the end and I'll share that with you after we fix it. Start by grabbing a slightly oversized piece of sheetrock. You want to make sure it's the same thickness as the current wall. Here in the US, the standard thickness of the inside walls is a half inch. If you're working on the outside wall or the ceiling, you may need a 5 8 inch thick piece. Place one corner of the sheetrock on the edge of the opening and mark a rough size of the opening on the piece. Here's a pro tip on how to work with sheetrock. Grab a knife and score the outer paper layer along the straight edge. Place the piece on top of a straight edge and apply pressure to snap the piece at the score line. Fold the sheetrock in half and bring it back to 45 degree angle and cut the other side of the paper. And there you have it, a perfect cut every time. Now that we have the correct height, repeat the same steps for the width. You can make these measurements with a measuring tape, but I find it with some practice, measuring in place is way faster and you are less likely to make measurement mistakes. With the patch piece cut to size, it's time to lay out the grid pattern for where to cut the pipe holes. Pick an outside pipe you want to start with. I will work from right to left because it feels more natural to me, but you can start from any size. Grab your pencil and the straight edge and place the piece on the side of the opening snugly against the pipe, lining up top and bottom. Rest the straight edge on the pipe and mark the reference line. We are done with the right side. Let's move on to the top of the pipes. Line up the side of the patch panel with the opening and mark the right and left reference lines for the pipe. Use the straight edge to extend the lines all the way to the top. If you have pipes on the same plane like me, go ahead and mark the reference lines for those pipes as well. Now that we have all the water pipes marked out, let's move on to the drain pipe. The process of making vertical reference lines is the same for any size pipe. With all the vertical lines completed, let's move on to the horizontal ones. Place the piece on the left hand side of the opening against the pipes and mark the reference lines. You may have noticed that the lines for the top water pipe on the left don't match up to the right. And that's due to one being slightly higher than the other. But luckily this method of measurement accounts for those discrepancies. Now that we made all the necessary reference lines for the water pipes, I like to circle the areas that need to be cut out. Next, let's move on to the horizontal reference lines for the waste pipe to complete this measuring process. If you're like me and you don't want to remove the water valves, you'll have to cut the patch piece into sections to attach it to the wall. Here's a pro tip. After all the measurements are completed, lay the piece flat on the, on the ground and score the cut lines with the blade along the straight edge. This will ensure your sheetrock handsaw will stay on the line during the entire cut. You're probably wondering, with all these lines, how do I know where to make my cut to divide this piece? Well, it's different in every instance, but in most cases, cut lines should be on the inside line of our measurements closest to the pipe. You can use the handsaw to cut out the piece, but I prefer the snap method because it does not remove any material like the saw does. After cutting one side of the sheetrock with the handsaw, I snap the other one to get a nice clean line. Right about here, I wish I had followed my own advice and not cut the piece in the wrong place, which will cause me to have three pieces instead of two. So let me make the cut on the right line this time and notch out the intersections of the circled lines to make room for the pipes. Before we go stitching these pieces all together, let's make sure they all fit as expected. Turns out cutting this patch into three pieces is not a big deal at all. You know what? This doesn't look half bad. Let's go over how to stitch it all together. For a job like this, mixing sticks are perfect. They are sturdy, but thin enough to fit between the sheetrock and the pipes. Using one inch sheetrock screws, I'm attaching two mixing sticks as a backer to hold the pieces together. I've left a few inches of the sticks exposed to the left so I can attach the top piece to the bottom piece during final installation. Here I've decided to check how the pieces will fit all together, but I'm realizing that they're not laying flat on the wall. After a few seconds of investigating the cause, I noticed that my mixing sticks are too long and are getting stuck on the stud and preventing the pieces from lining up correctly. So I do the logical thing and shorten them. And what do you know, it all fits together great. At this point, everything is lined up and I'm ready to secure everything down. I go to screw the two pieces together and the bottom piece pops out under the pressure of the screw. This is caused by lack of support on the left hand side of where I shortened the mixing sticks. So to solve this problem, all you have to do is add a screw in the middle and it will serve as a makeshift handle to hold the pieces together while you screw them in. Now with the patch as one whole piece, I can attach it in all four corners with two inch screws for a little extra oomph. 
You can't see it on this camera angle, but some of the gaps around the patch are wider than I like. And I'm afraid if I use regular mud, it may crack over time. For me, it's not a big deal because it will be covered by my kitchen cabinets. But if you're doing this in the toilet or shower area where it may be visible, you should use rock hard. My father-in-law turned me on to this and it's great for those large sheetrock gaps that you wanna make sure will never crack over time. I didn't have a whole lot of the product left. So as a sample for you, I sealed all the large gaps and then switched to the regular spackle. I'm not sponsored by Rock Hard, but Rock Hard, if you're watching this, give me a call. One last thing that I like to point out about Rock Hard product is it gets really hard when it dries and it's not easy to sand. So it's best to make it as smooth as possible during the application. In case you're still wondering why we opened up this wall in the first place, I'll tell you. During the old kitchen cabinet removal, we discovered that the water pipes were just dangling in the wall, which is not very safe. So we opened up the wall to secure them to the studs and to prevent any accidental damage in the future. This is what it looks like after a good sanding and a second coat of spackle. And then my favorite distraction stopped by to show off her drum skills and show off the final sanded product in the background. This is the only shot I have of the finished patch job and it will have to do. Thank you guys so much for watching another one of my videos. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. If you loved it, then just go ahead and subscribe now. We have plenty more where these came from. See you in the next one. Thank you.